Louis G, Big Boys Neighborhood. All right, it's going down. UFC 223, April 7th, Brooklyn, New York, in the building. Man, this is a pleasure to have you in here. Tony El Cucuy Ferguson, bro. How you doing, fam? Not too bad, man. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it, man. It's this, better than being stuck in traffic. This is the first <laughs> way. Yeah, we're talking about LA traffic and everything out here is crazy, right? At least I have some good tunes to listen to, man, on 92.3. So nice, sure. man. So we were just talking about, so you train out of where? Out of Costa Mesa, man. It's beautiful. I like being mm -hmm. near the water. It's kind of near when I started out in Oxnard. Yeah. So you have that, that breeze when you get to be able to run the beach and enjoy the scenery while you're actually, you know, killing it. Gotcha. You came in here, man, sporting a, a, a whole suit. You got the belt in the building, lightweight champion, man. It's only right that, you know, if you're going to take off your shirt, fam, and his coat, then I take off mine. You know what I mean? Hey, you know what? You got to be chill hey, with man. it, too, because what I was going to do see this guy show, trying to, like, show me out right now. I was going to show up wearing cargo on, shorts and man. just the top, like a mullet. Nah, I was going to be like a party up top and business downstairs. Let's nah. go. <laughs> Yo, Tony, so let's talk, man. UFC 223, you versus Khabib. What's going to happen, man? You excited? I'm really excited. I think a lot of people forgot that I come out of a boxing background. Uh, I used to train with mm -hmm. Victor Ortiz out of Knuckleheads. You know, he said I hit hella hard. And yeah. for me, I do hit hard. I learned how to hit the bags. And then in one of my fights, I broke my arm. I learned how to just box too much. Yeah. So I had to learn the rest of the game. Man, just watching you guys go back and forth and, 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 and everything leading up to the fight, there's so much shit talking going on, man. Absolutely. Is Khabib a shit talker or are you a shit talker for me i like to stand my ground yeah i'm mexican dude mm -hmm. so you know what i have when i go out there and uh i demonstrate what i have to do and somebody pushes my buttons i'm not a mat gotcha. this is my mat that's what i do is when i point out there and i've all, i've been called a lot of names you can call me whatever you want mm -hmm. but like i told khabib i was like it's only me and you locked inside that cage you know khabib khabib is a great fighter he's undefeated does the undefeated record um does it worry you Absolutely not. I mean, I call him a padded record. Now, with a lot Ooh. of his fights... You call him a what? Repeat it's a that? It's a padded record. Out of that 25 yeah. fights, he's got maybe like half of them are only sanctioned for two rounds. Now, here in the States and everywhere else yeah. in the world, they're sanctioned for three rounds. Now, I'm 27, 28, and three. Mm -hmm. And I've had losses where I had to learn how to lose yeah. and accept the loss, give myself one day to sulk in it, and then actually bounce back from that. You would never see me like... The next day, I would be inside the gym working my butt off, yeah. hitting the jump rope, hitting the speed bag. You guys saw me hitting the speed bag in my slacks, right? With <laughs> the blindfold. We got to talk about that too. Oh, absolutely. So <laughs> this is something that I enjoy doing, and I yeah. told myself when I stop enjoying this, that's when I'm going to retire. So gotcha. this belt, I don't really carry. I actually have a belt right here, so you guys don't yes. really know. I have the, he does have the belt. belt right in front of us. It's guys. nice and shiny. It's awesome. Yes, it is. And I don't carry it very often mm -hmm. with me. I bring it to some places so people can actually see it, especially mi gente, porque it's especial para yo. Yeah. And for me, it's to it's kind of like a paperweight right now. Gotcha. Because everybody thinks that this is a fake belt. Mm -hmm. But nobody's seen the hard work that I've put in. Of course, of course. No one's in the ring with you fighting. No, but I get to yeah. use the analogy. Look, check this out. With the belt, yeah. everybody can win a belt. Anybody can talk the way towards a championship, as we've seen with a couple people. But not everybody can win an ultimate fighter championship. Now, I have that trophy. Mm -hmm. Now, that takes a special kind of person to be able to go through that house and to be able to do all the things and then be able to be that champion in the finale. For me, I've been blessed. Dana White and, and, and yeah. the Fertitas and everybody, and then especially Forrest Griffin and Stephen Bonner. Now, these dudes, I walked in the house, and I didn't know the, 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 the tradition that they had. Gotcha. And those guys put it on the line so that guys like myself and the rest of the fighters could go out there and perform on this type of platform. By far one of the craziest fights I've ever seen with uh, Stefan and Griffin, man. Like The guys in the house talked epic, about it, man. man. I've never seen anything like that, especially when Dana White was like, both you guys are getting contracts. That's how you know it was just like legit. It's and real. that's what kind of hit off the Ultimate Fighter. Let's talk about the Ultimate Fighter, man. For those who don't know, you uh, you came out of that. Yes. You came out. You, there's like nine champions that have came out of the Ultimate Fighter, and you are one of them, man. I was one of the, uh, not the first ones, but I did with all the knockouts. I was the first one to knock mm -hmm. everybody out now i think that's where everybody kind of forgot yeah that i used to knock everybody out 170 pounds now okay, i used to yeah, walk yeah. i used to walk around around like 200 plus damn so in my job i was like pretty big but i always stay close to my weight during wrestling and all i'm a three-time all-state two-time all-american national champ state mm -hmm. champ and even in football and baseball played all those different sports and what i did is i like to utilize those things those techniques and that footwork and the mechanics that i do and that's something that khabib doesn't understand Mm -hmm. he, like for me I like to have fun with this sport and if you're not having fun and you're stressing and you're doing your yeah. thing with cutting your weight and not being professional I mean dude you got 25 fights and you haven't figured out how to cut weight yet come on now do you think he's stressing about you absolutely now I got under his skin the other yeah. day and I have that ability to be able to do that with Khabib and uh, just which part? You told him you were going to embarrass him? Would I, I, got, I got so many Twitter quotes and so many interview quotes. Absolutely. <laughs> You're I mean, just going to show him out his bum knee. What else? For sure. I mean, the conference call, it was funny, but I was into my workout. Yeah. I was dragging a tire, actually, in one of my, my training sessions, and he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, well shit, what are you doing? Are you stuffing your face full of tiramisu? Because I'm out here working. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, it's like, 
nothing interviews or whatever ain't gonna yeah. stop me and i used that explanation when i was hitting the bag with, with the slacks right gotcha i was doing an interview with just ESPN chilling nonchalant just in slacks no i was doing an interview with yeah. espn magazine and i invited the dude it took him two years to be able to come and i invited him i was like look you have to earn your right to come and like watch me train i don't open my doors wow. to everybody and he, he was after it and after and after and i told him i was like look man you've earned it I took him to some of my places where I used to go train, and I and, and he like he was chill, man. I yeah. was like, bring your Nikes. He thought I was gonna make him run sprints, but no, nah, I was pretty chill with it. Yeah, took him down the coast on the PCH and showed him the beauty of it. He's from a Vegas, uh -huh. so I was like, check this out, man. California's got so much beauty to be able to be offered, but if you find yourself stuck in the gym the whole entire time, you're gonna go crazy. You're gonna go nutty. And I think that's what Khabib be doing. He'd been surrounding himself around people, holding his hand, giving mm -hmm. him structured workouts from ten to two, and then from six gotcha. to eight, and then somebody holding his hand to like make sure he measures his food. You don't have anybody doing that for me because I paid attention to those people. I asked those questions. I'm a student in this game. Gotcha. I think I've mastered a couple of things, mm -hmm. but even when I think I did, I don't know everything, bro. And I've accepted that to be able to grow. And I've taken admitted all those things that I thought and I shelled it like an onion, right? Like you have like some of the bad skin yeah. on the outside. I had to get rid of certain people and certain things that were holding me back. Gotcha. Because that takes a real student to be able to realize that and to be able to grow from it. What's one of the biggest mistakes, man, that, that you've experienced in your career? Uh, losing. Yeah. But learning how, and I can't say it's a mistake because when you learn how to lose, you yeah. learn how to win better. And it's not always about winning. It's learning how to accept how to bounce off of a loss. Now, gotcha. with Khabib, he's 25 and no. Yeah. He's never lost before and he's never been cut before. Now, when people piss me off in my fights, I mean, I, I hate to say it like this, but then I make them bloody. I use my elbows and you see that that one oh meme that I had with the beyond thing. elbows yeah but that's that's an art that's in Muay Thai and so like and with Kevin Lee he was from my alma mater I felt I didn't yeah. feel I didn't want to hurt him and even with Landon Venata I don't want to hurt that dude either I just want to put him away you heard Khabib say it too like he was talking to Michael Johnson he's like just quit it's a psychological kind of warfare and I already Khabib already knows man he's telling me and he he I looked him in the eyes mm -hmm. and I told him straight up I was like have fun with that weight cut sucking air your conditioning sucks at Damn. UFC 209. That dude took food off of my kid's table. He didn't show up and he robbed me by like maybe a quarter, quarter mil. Wow. So I'm thinking like, all right, dude, you got problems, man. Yeah. Because I'm Mexican, American, and you're taking that food off of my kid's table and then you want to put the blame on me? I'm not your scapegoat, son. No, nah, I feel problems. you. I feel UFC 223, man, going down April 7th. Uh, make sure you catch it on pay-per-view. I got to ask you, too, ha by any chance, man, uh, just in the lightweight division, I want to show you something right now, man. For sure. So Ultimate Fighter 20 what? What, 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 what was the year? 2011? Uh, I think so, your yeah. Ultimate Fighter, Ultimate mm -hmm. Fighter 13th? I want you to sh I want to show you this book right here. November 16, 2013, the St. Pierre Hendricks book, right? Oh, for sure. I want you to go to this page right here, bro. And I want you to check this out. It's a nice book. It's an amazing book. This is a lightweight division. Mm -hmm. Look at all the names on there. Can so, you read some of those names, man, from the from the top to the bottom? Oh, you, which one? The division rankings at yeah, the time? Yeah, the division Pettis, rankings. Henderson, Melendez, Grant, Thompson, Maynard, Dos Anjos, Nurmagomedov, Diaz, Miller, Cerrone. Is it crazy that since 13 to now, you are now a champion and you are now on that list if that book were to come out today. You know what? And it's really important to some people. Yeah. But I think to me, too, it's when I said to myself, I was like, I was going to get everybody on that list and be able to go through it. One of my first people that I really admired and I actually went, got into this fight was GSP. Mm -hmm. Now, people don't remember that, but he was the man. Yeah, GSP was the man. So when I first started into this, I didn't get into the lightweight rankings on purpose. They, they made me go down to 55. Gotcha. I was at 170 pounds and I made all knockouts. I think that's where everybody forgot. And then when I moved down to 55, I had to learn a different art because these dudes got faster. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So being able to like, to accept that like, okay, I got to learn jujitsu now. And I got into the 10 planet jujitsu with Eddie Bravo and learning yeah. that he was a wrestler before that. And then surrounding myself around people doing Muay Thai. And then my boy Rashad Holloway learning boxing over at Wild Card and learning the lineage of like all these different sports. And like, that's a wrestling chart. That book that you just showed me. Yeah. Now, if you've ever wrestled before and you go on the chart and you look at the next person, next person, you haven't even got past that first match, you're taking yourself out of the game. That's what my pops taught me. Wow. So when you accept that, like, look, I got to get through this dude. And you're like, okay, I don't care where he's from or what yeah. school or what colors he's repping. No, dude, that's the same dude on you. And he bleeds the same exact weight, which is red inside that octagon. How'd you grow up, Tony? Where did you grow up? How was your, how was your upbringing? I was super chill, man. Yeah. Just being called, you know, just names as possibly can. I mean, I have big ears and I'm brown. I mean, growing up in Michigan, it was pretty hard, man. Fighting all the time and doing my thing. But I never let it get me down. Yeah. What it did is it made me tough. And I worked hard and I kept my nose chill. And I, I oh, what's a grit. I was a hard hitter in football. Yeah. 
And so that's what Khabib's going to get. He's a fullback, and I'm a cornerback. <laughs> I'm going to put that dude on his back. You ever see a turtle on his back? Yeah. Well, I'm Casey Jones. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Let me ask you this, man. Um, so as far as far as this fight goes, man, and, and Khabib's out there obviously doing his press. You guys are both talking like that. Is there any – do you guys have any other – do you guys communicate – Via calls, you guys text each other, or it's just completely until we see each other in the ring. Look, I have respect for the yeah. dude, but I think a lot of the times that when you surround yourself around people, I mean, depends on you. You know what I'm talking about? If you're upbringing, if you surround yourself around knuckleheads, you're going to be a knucklehead. Mm -hmm. With Khabib, I think he's got a lot of people on his plate that are literally holding his hand and making him trying to fight or something. If you don't have that fight and that passion and you to want to cut the weight yourself or be able to go to the gym on your own, are you really in this sport for that right reason? Do you think he's in it for the money? Absolutely not, and I guarantee it because he ain't looking for it. That dude, I told him, he said he I, he owes me two hundred k, and I told him to donate it. What did he say? He being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, told him, I was like, Cause that no, because the last fight he wanted to fight, and I told him I was like, all right, it's cool. He's like, I pay you too, you know. Yeah. All right, yeah, I get it, man. But you look, do something with it. Do something positive with it if you don't need yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because there's people out there earning their way out here, like myself. I'm not out there doing media. I'm not doing out there. I don't even, I should be in the gym right now, but I'm here at 92.3 representing not just myself, but my gente también. Gotcha. I'm Mexican American and a lot of people, like on my Reebok gear, I can only wear one. Mm -hmm. They tell me you can't wear both. You can't wear Mexican and American. Or seriously, I'm like, yeah. what the frick? And so for me, it's kind of like, okay, how am I representing not just myself, but just everybody else out there? Gotcha. So I'm not out there in the media doing this kind of thing. So when I have the opportunity to do this, I have fun with it, which is great. The the media calls that we do, and I know I get it under his skin, but the people love it. I, I get it. They love it, but that's that's the real talk. Gotcha. I mean, seriously, that dude's got a padded record. He's flat-footed. He has no rhythm. I've, I've been surrounded by Mexican barbecues my whole entire life, man, even when it was cold out and there was snow. You dang straight, right? The barbecue coals are going to melt that snow. And uh, when you got good music playing, and you got good familia out there, and you're doing your thing, you really feel it, and, you, and that's what the groove is. And a lot of people, I think, have lost yeah. that. And that's where, for me, if they hear my music and they start like nodding and they start having a good time and they're having their beer and they're kicking back and they're having some tacos or whatever the food is, that's dope. That's what the UFC is. If you've ever been to a UFC event, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, such a dope, seriously, an amazing, it's an amazing event. Of yeah, course. you're like at a monster truck rally. Yeah, it's so dope. So, I mean, when you're, when you're in there and you got a good DJ playing some good music, you got good vibes and you got good people, you really don't see the fights in the stands. You don't see that kind of thing because everybody's just so in awe, just like just kind of just chilling and just engulfed with the situation because they know when you see like the, on the highlight film, you see these people putting it on the line. They see them in the gym, the blood, sweat, and tears. That's the stuff that nobody gets to see. Yeah. But the youth should be able to hone that in and be able to put a highlight film together like that. That's beauty, man. That's art. Tony, when did you know you were you, you were meant for this, man? You were meant for the UFC, MMA. I this, didn't. This I, was I, you. I accidentally fell into this. How? I actually went to a, a bar and I was trying to get a bartending job or a bouncing job, and I showed up in holy jeans and a holy shirt, and it was funny because when I did, the guy actually gave me a jujitsu card, and it was a seven day pass, and I didn't have a lot of cash to go out there. Uh -huh. I just moved, so I was trying to look for a job, and he was like, "Just come and check it out. You look tough. You got those ears." And I was like, guy, you got those ears. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> he got it? those. He got those cauliflower ears, and, and and people that have cauliflower ears, you, yeah. you don't just get that. You don't just hit yourself on the ear. You earn that. So I had grittiness in, in mid Midwest where people would be pulling down on my headgear. My ears were big, so that sh that would hurt, man. Yeah. And the guy gave me a, the thing. And long story short, I show up to the gym, and I didn't like the jujitsu part because I had wrestling. I liked to box. Gotcha. And I always wanted to box, but I could never box. Pops was like, no, you got to do something that you can keep yourself in school. You make the grade, you can play. Mm hmm. So when you don't make the grade, obviously you don't play, but I'm like, man, I don't have any gloves. What am I going to do? I look over here in this blue bin and I look at a pair of gloves that are mixed matched and I asked if I could use these pair of gloves. I didn't have any hand wraps and so I started hitting the bag and somebody noticed that I hit hecka hard and they're like, man, you cool too? You, you Mexican? Yeah, bro. Well, the last name Ferguson? I'm like, yeah, bro. That's cool. But don't trip, man. And really, I really just stayed inside the gym and this dude showed up the next day. He saw me, and I had like maybe a couple of days left on that pass. And he showed me. He was like, "You got to take care of your hands, Mule." He fucking he gave me a pair of Everlast or uh, ringside gloves, and they were lace ups, sixteen ounces. Mm -hmm. And that was probably the best gift that somebody could ever gave me. And it was like somebody paid it forward to me. They gave me the opportunity to be able to demonstrate my not just my talent but my athletics. Yeah. And to keep me out from being a bartender, doing all that other shit, and you know, surrounding myself around stuff that I probably shouldn't be doing. And so when I found myself inside the gym and I found other people starting to do that and then people test you, they have to. I had one amateur fight and then I mm -hmm. turned pro. And it was Damn. dope. I told this dude, he looked like 260 pounds and he had tattoos all over the place. And then the commission showed up and he was like, hey, I'm going to test you against this guy. And I was like, yeah, with small gloves? You sure? 
And this guy's kind of big. All right, cool. Let's go. Boom. Ankle picked him. Threw him around on the ground. Neon belly had my hand on his throat. And I looked at him. I was like, with a Wolverine claw. And I said, you done? He said, yeah. And I helped him up. I said, can we, can we put the big gloves on? He, he said, said, yeah, yeah. let's go. He said, yeah, please put Absolutely. on the big gloves. And so when I did that, it was one of those things where it's like, I never had to go and like fight for my food. Yeah. And I'm blessed for that. But now I have to. So like when I'm inside the gym and I'm doing my thing and it's cool, man. Like, and if somebody wants to take a picture while I'm doing my thing, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. I just started opening up my garage door. So a lot of like the hint, they could roll by and they could actually see like me training and stuff. They hear the speed bag and they tell you, you hit it better than Canelo. That's, that's props. That is props, man. That's a compliment. Let me ask you, uh, where, where did El Cucuy come from, man, the nickname? That was from one of my original trainers. And uh, he, he owned a gym out in Oxnard. Yeah. And he was just like, man, you got those long arms and you got that those ears. And, and, and it just kind of flowed with me. He was just like, you're El Cucuy. He's like, when you were trained, you had these eyes. And I have this thing. Look, if I have angry eyebrows, right, that means my chin is down. Mm. Hands up, chin down. So then he's like, man, you look mean. But that was something I got taught in the university is to be able to go and stalk your opponents. You have to run them down. You have to go in there and you have to put that pressure, make them quit. Yeah. And you have to have the heart to back it up. A lot of people say you don't have that heart inside this inside this game. You can't grow it. You can't, you have to have it. It. You gotta have it, yeah. No, you I can. don't believe that. I believe it can anything can be nurtured. Hmm. If you take a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of heart, and you give somebody a chance, you can nurture that into something big, into a tree or into whatever. If you have deep roots and you nurture that, I think I see so many coaches out there, they actually like give up. And I heard coaches say this shit. And I hate to say swear on them thing, mm -hmm. but I looked at them. I want to smack them. I've had coaches smack me in the face. I'm like, go ahead, smack the other side. You feel good about yourself? Because you know what? You're teaching those guys that. Yeah. So all those coaches out there, you guys better take fucking notes. Damn. That was a lot. You seem super humble, man. Super confident in yourself. I, I just want to ask you, like, what is it, man? Is, is, is Was there ever a life-changing moment where it got you to this point where you're just so humble, man, and just so like, what, what is it? You kid? I had my wife. I, I, had, I had to look after something other than myself. Family. And the one thing is you can be so selfish in this game. And that's yeah. what I did. I had, I've had people love me and then hate me. On the show, I should have said, don't be a dead, be dead. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But instead, it, like, and I had to be a scapegoat for so many people. And I got so much hate. Seriously, I had so much hate. And then I got so much love. And you're only as good as your last fight. And yeah. I learned that. And then when I stopped looking at all the likes and retweets and all this other BS, that's when my numbers skyrocketed. And gotcha. I was like, and I was like, dude, when you start focusing on on the on the, on the not important things, that's when you're gonna lose yourself. If you find yourself inside the yeah. gym or wherever you're at, I mean, I've had a cubicle job too, man, and there's nothing wrong with it. But I said to myself, I was like, that's not for me. Because I went to school for physical therapy and nursing and being a cop. Oh wow! But I found out that I wasn't ready to graduate yet. And somebody said, you made it. And one of my aunt they said, you, you made it, dude. And yeah. I was like, no, I haven't made it yet. I was like, when I make it is when I get my degree. Wow. So you think education is very obviously. That's something that you get. Education is very, very important. Yeah. I went to universities and I wasn't even sure what I wanted to do or what I wanted to be, but I knew I was hospitable and I like to help people. That's dope. So for me, and when I'm inside that gym and I'll, anywhere, when I was in Mexico, right, and I had to go work out, it was dope. It was awesome for me to be able to go out there and to show some of my moves to some of these guys and do yeah. like a culture exchange. Because for me, it's a lot different. And I'm not speaking for it any of the other ufc fighters i don't i don't speak for anybody else just myself and i will always continue to do that because that's my family that's my small circle when i started opening up my doors like mm -hmm. that that's when people became abrasive and i had to take that away like layers of onions what's one thing that you think people don't understand about you i'm very creative yeah. i'm very artistic and um what's cringe you know it's to grasp to clinch mm -hmm. i am a wrestler you know what i mean you have that song lunatic fringe mm -hmm. lunatic cringe Lunatic cringe, there you go. But it's funny though, because a lot of people, they throw these words out and because uh -huh. somebody will say it. And so that's why I started watching what I say is because a lot of people are listening. A lot of these youngsters are yeah, out there they're listening and they want to repeat what you say and what you do. All right, that's cool. Hey, look, I'm wearing slacks hitting the speed bag. And everybody didn't know. Like, I, that's why I call them casuals. The casuals just started watching this stuff, but they become hardcore fans. Now, if they become hardcore fans and they're like, oh yeah, you're an idol. No, you're an idea. That's dope. Are you are you active on social media? I try to be, yeah. but I try to I try to just do my own thing. I don't put it out there for likes and retweets. Like I said, when I stop yeah. doing that, I put out funny things, and and if somebody gets my creativity and they get like my just whatever it is, then it's awesome because that's how that's how it is. There's no like hidden yeah. meanings behind nothing. What it is is just I like to quote movies. I mean, old school head man. It's What's like, one of your favorite movies? Half baked. 
<laughs> <laughs> it's funny dude there's so many quotable it's a great movie and it's so funny you had like Jim Brewer and a bunch of those guys on there and they're just hilarious they're characters yeah. and that's I mean I think having fun in this sport and be able to do that kind of thing and to go through the motions and having fun with it I mean straight up man it's super chill I'm blessed to be able to do what I do and I have fun with it and like I said when I'm not having fun with it no more I'll retire I'll go do something else alright you mentioned earlier before we wrap up man you mentioned earlier you, uh, your other job prior to a UFC was uh, you were a bartender before Yo. did you actually do bartending for a while or yeah no? I was terrible at it though really? man yeah for sure bro let me ask you this man if Khabib wore a cocktail drink what kind of cocktail drink would Khabib be shit I do would be a rum runner I do would be <laughs> running from the fight straight up <laughs> <laughs> he said a rum runner. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Conor McGregor, what kind of cocktail would he be? Mm, I don't know. Something with McNuggets straight up. I, I'm running out of ideas on these ones because I actually, you're not the first one that asked me really? this. Really? Yeah. No, somebody asked me this over at the ESPN or, or something like that. I forget. But I mean, it's straight up like these drinks. I mean, if you don't add the right ingredients, it ain't going to taste right. There it is. And these guys right here, they don't have the right ingredients to beat me. I mean, shaking and stirred, it don't matter. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do what I got to do on the rocks. Yo, Tony El Cucuy Ferguson, man. Thank you so much for coming through, man. Thank you. Shout out to all you. You know, you got a lot of fans out there, man. So where can they find you at? Instagram, Twitter, everything on? Hey, follow me on my way to victory at Tony Ferguson XT on that IG and a little Twitter thingy. Go ahead, the little Twitter thingy. There you go, man. Tony El Cucuy Ferguson, UFC 223, go down April 7th in Brooklyn, New York. Yo, they also got uh, Rose and Joanna. That's going to be a great fight, hey, too. Thug, man. She, she, hey, she's something else. Rose, Rose, oh my gosh. Rose the last fight. Amazing. Fire. It's going to be epic, man. Uh, thank you for having Thank you for just coming through, man. I appreciate Rose. you, man. Great. Uh, amazing meeting you, bro. Best of luck, man. And uh, hopefully we'll see you with that hand up. Absolutely, the octagon, man. man. Absolutely. Gotcha, Thank you, man. Very Tony much. El Cucuy Ferguson, man. Luigi, big boys neighborhood.